Hello, my name is David Jones, and I'm the immediate past president of Queen City Toastmasters. Thanks for reaching out to us about information about the club. This video is to give you a quick overview of what public speaking is, what Toastmasters is, and how it can help you. Now, I obviously was president of the club last year, hence the reason I'm immediate past president. I've also been treasurer. I'm in the area and district level uh, leadership roles. And I come across a lot of the same questions and I just wanted to, to answer them for you now so that you can hopefully get into Toastmasters next week. Now, the first question about Toastmasters is, is, is there an easy way to overcome your fear of public speaking? Now, there's organizations out there that'll do a three-day weekend seminar, you know, intense program where you're there all day. There's others that'll do like a nine-week course. Of course, there's Toastmasters. Uh, you can read books, download Udemy videos and training programs or watch YouTube. There's any number of ways that you can overcome your fear of public speaking in your mind. In, re in reality, the only way is to come to Toastmasters because you need to come week after week after week and practice a speech week after week. You know, you can't read a book. You can't do a three-day seminar. Three days is not enough time for you to overcome your fear of public speaking. Now, if you are comfortable being a public speaker or you have some experience with it, then maybe those seminars and books and stuff like that are uh, there to help enhance your ability to speak in public. But if you're scared to death and you've never been uh, into public speaking or Toastmasters, that has to be your step, first step. That's the only way. I mean, there's no shortcuts. Every single week, you have to come to a meeting and engage and be a part of the club, whether it's in a role or doing public speaking. The other fear that some people have is the cost of Toastmasters. They assume it's a lot of money. As I mentioned, there's uh, companies that do these three-day seminars. Some of those are like $2,500. And at the end of three days, you're gonna be, wow, that was awesome, but I'm still scared <laughs> to speak in public. Uh, you can spend $1,000 for like a nine-week course, or you can come to some place like Toastmasters. Now, Queen City has been in existence since 1954. We're the oldest club in Charlotte. Uh, we're one of the beacon clubs of the district. There's 110 clubs in the, the district and we're almost always one of the top clubs. Um, we're $150 a year. Other clubs might be $95 or $150 a year. And that's billed every six months at $75. So you don't even have to commit to a whole year, a whole $150. So you can do it for six months. And some clubs, when you're looking at different clubs, some clubs only meet every two weeks, some meet once a month, we meet every single week. Now, Thanksgiving and Christmas will probably be off for a week. Therefore, you're looking at about 50 meetings a year. Uh, divided by 150, that's $3 per meeting to overcome the biggest fear you've ever had. Um, hopefully you're worth $150 to overcome your fear, but again, that's your only way. And once you come into the club, we have no swag. You know, we're not gonna try to upsell you with a t-shirt or upsell you with this or that. Uh, we have speech contests, which are going on now. There's no cost for you to join the speech contest, um, but you can't see it. It's a clear one, but I have a, a trophy back there, first place for humorous speech contest. Didn't cost me anything. They mailed it to me for free. Uh, what else? We have club coaches. If you're scared and you need a mentor or coach, uh, no cost for that. It's free. I'm a coach. And then we have another member at our club that's also a coach. Uh, no cost. So the most you're going to spend at Queen City is $150. We even provide the water and snacks for each meeting. You know? So again, you're not paying for anything but your gas to get there. Now, right now, it's April 2022, I think. Yes. And uh, we're hybrid. So you can watch us on Zoom or in person. I would recommend you come in person because that's where the magic happens. But your first time, if you're a little nervous, you can log on and Zoom and, and check us out. The other misconception I have from people is they say they want to come to a meeting and check it out, but they don't have anything prepared. They don't have a speech. And that's not a thing. You know, when you come your first one, two, three, ten times, you're not you don't need a speech. You're not going to be speaking uh, day one, especially not as a guest. I mean, you, basically, you're not allowed to give a speech. You have to join in order to give a speech. Uh, when you come, you're going to have to do one thing. Introduce yourself. We're going to say, What's your name and where'd you hear about us? And you're going to say, my name's David, and I Googled, and Queen City came up. That's it. You're done speaking for the night. Now, there will be an opportunity later for you to volunteer to do a little one to two minute speech called Table Topics. It's impromptu, but you don't have to. And if you're asked to do it, just say, you know, 
uh, maybe next time I'm not ready. There's no shame in not wanting to do it. So the most you're going to have to do is introduce yourself. So hopefully you can do that. And those are really the biggest misconceptions is the cost, uh, that you have to be ready to give a speech when you walk in. I mean, you're going to walk in, introduce yourself and just, just zip it. Just watch what's going on and try to understand. That's what I want to explain here. There's a board of directors. There's seven board of directors and myself, an immediate past president. So you got president, uh, vice president of education, membership, uh, secretary, treasurer, public relations. There's all different roles and they run the club. But again, those are members. They pay $150 a year, just like you work. Everybody there is equal. It's a nonprofit. Nobody gets paid. I don't get paid for anything. Um, so when you come to the meeting, it starts with two people, the sergeant at arms, who is a board member. He's going to start the meeting. And then the president's going to say a few words. And then she's going to turn it over to the Toastmaster. Toastmaster, from the Toastmaster till the end of the meeting, every single person that's speaking is a club member. You sign up for that role. You volunteer for it. You know, once I had somebody ask me, who runs the meeting? Is it, is it you or is it a professional speaker? And the answer is no, it's the club members. That's the beauty of the club. Uh, so you'll sign up. Well, Toastmaster is the biggest role. And there's a lot of titles. When you join Toastmasters, you are a Toastmaster. Therefore, you would uh, talk to me as Toastmaster Dave. And I'd say you're Toastmaster Jane or Toastmaster Bob. So you are a Toastmaster. Then there's the Toastmaster of the night or Toastmaster of the day. They run the meeting. They are the facilitator. They're the ringleader. They introduce all the roles and everything. And they're on point the whole time. But from then on, including the Toastmaster, that's a role that you sign up for. So we have a timer because all of our speeches are timed because at work, you only have a certain amount of time to give a speech. So we we time everything. So timer is a role. We have a ballot counter. We vote for our favorite speaker of the night, our favorite table topic, our favorite evaluator. We have a grammarian. Grammarian is listening for uh, filler words like what I just did. When you say um or uh or so or you know, these are words that we shouldn't be using in, in our speeches. We should pause instead of going um, just go. And like I was saying, you, know, you, you shouldn't be using filler words. And we have a person that listens to every single speaker and jots them down and points it out to you. It's not to criticize you, it's to make you aware of it. Now that I'm mentioning it, now you're gonna be aware the next time you say so, you're gonna think, I shouldn't have said so. Also, the grammarian is gonna give a word of the day. Word of the day is usually a simple word that we want you to try to use in one of your speeches or roles whenever you're talking. So this word of the day might be hat. You could be talking about something to say, I took my hat off, Tim. And the reason for that is, you know, at work, you might be asked to talk about the ABC account and you prepare for it. And then last minute, your boss is like, don't forget to talk about the XYZ account. You know, like, I'm ready for ABC. Well, at Toastmaster, you've been pr practicing throwing different things into it. Uh, and that's the reason we have a word of the day. Then we have speeches. And usually some people do a speech a week. You know, they're maniacs, but most people give a speech once a month or once every other month because, you know, you got to think about it, you got to write it, you got to perfect it, you want to try to get it within a certain time frame, and you want to practice over and over and get the confidence to do it, especially your first one. Uh, but we have speakers, and the beauty of Toastmasters is you get feedback. So you're not just going to get up there and give a speech and sit down and go, What did I do? You have an evaluator and the evaluator is going to evaluate your speech. You're going to say, this is what you did good. This is where you can improve. And in the future, I challenge you to do this. So for instance, we're going to be looking for your hand movements. Are you just standing there scared like this or are you using the entire room or the entire Zoom camera? Are you speaking properly? Are you using different vocal varieties? You're going high and low and saying, how are you doing? And doing different voices or are you just monotone? They're going to look at... Uh, just what your subject matter is and if the whole thing makes sense. All right. So that's where the evaluators come in. And then we have a general evaluator who evaluates the evaluators because we want to make sure that you're being evaluated properly. And the general evaluator evaluates the meeting as a whole, just so that we know, and again, we're one of the top clubs, how to improve. I mean, we, we're, we kind of get used to doing things. So the general evaluator says, y'all did great, except for you didn't do this or that. There's an area called the table topics. And there's a table topics master and he gets up or she gets up and asks uh, usually three people uh, questions. 
And it's a one to two minute speech. And that's where you as a guest could get up. Um, but you don't have to. And I just said, um, and it's a one to two minutes and it's a random question. It's like, uh, what's your favorite movie and why? And you're going to come up there and talk for one to two minutes. We have the timer. The timer has a light, green, yellow, red. It looks like a traffic light. Green minute, it's going to come on at one, one minute and then green light comes on. So, you know, wow, I made it. <laughs> and some people just stop. And then at 1.30, the yellow light comes on. And then in two minutes, the red light comes on. And you have 30 seconds to wrap it up once the red light comes on. Uh, and, and that's just your, your first uh, introduction into public speaking. But all the roles, you have to get up and give a little speech, explain your role. Like, I'm the timer, and this is what I'm going to do, or I'm the ballot counter. And that's how you start your public speaking. You only might only be speaking for like 30 seconds, but you're getting up and addressing the, the, the club. And that's how you get started. And once you get comfortable doing all the different roles, then you might say, all right, I'm ready to give a speech. And speeches are usually five to seven minutes. Most of them, your first speech will be four to six minutes. It's called an icebreaker. That's your first one. Some speeches are 10 to 12 minutes, but that's as you get more advanced. But a majority are five to seven. And it's a great way to, to do public speaking. The only way to do it is you come every week, sign up for a role or sign up for a speech. If you just come and sit and watch, you're not gonna overcome your fear of public speaking. Now, the, as a guest, come a few times. You don't have to be participating, but do try to, once you join in, if you wanna do public speaking, Toastmasters is the only way. It's the only, there's, I can't think of any other way for you to overcome your fear of public speaking. If you're you know, currently scared, if you're first time and you're, you're doing really poorly at public speaking, can't go join a seminar, don't buy another book, don't download a Udemy course on how to do public speaking. You're, you're just wasting your money. To come to Toastmaster, we'd love you to come to Queen City, but if not, there's, like I said, 110 clubs in the district, which goes from Asheville to Greensboro down to Charlotte area, but you should just come to the best club, which is where we're at. We're here every single week. We're on Zoom and hybrid. We record all of our meetings. So not only do you have an evaluator evaluating you, but you can also go back on our YouTube channel and watch your performance. Even if it's just a role or a table topics, whatever it is, a speech, you can actually see for yourself how you did. So we hope to hear from you or see you in person. And there should be uh, a link below to our website. And at the top of the website is our Zoom link. And at the bottom is the address to the church. You park at the back of the church and you should see signs and you come in. Uh, we're always there except for one week of Thanksgiving, one week of Christmas, but six, try to be there about 6.15. goes from about 6.15 to about 7.45, 7.30, depending on how much activity we have. Um, but if you want to get over your fear of public speaking and start it, come. We have young and old. You know, we have people in their 20s and we got old people like me in their 50s. We have experienced speakers like myself and some others. And then we got first timers who are still just sitting there scared. And I try to encourage them to get up. But Queen City is a place for you. And we hope to see you very soon. And I'm going to pretend that you don't see me turning off the camera.